This screencast is devoted to the differential geometry of the helix, and in it I give you a parameterization of the helix with two positive constants, r a radius, and k which sets the, the pitch of the, the helix, that is to say how far the, the curve rises per, per rotation in the xy plane. And I ask you to compute all the following quantities, the three Fernet basis vectors, t, n, and b, as well as the curvature, radius of curvature, and torsion. We know we're going to need the, for the tangent vector, we know we're going to need the derivative of the parameterization. We've done this many times, so we can go fast. Now, you recall that the tangent vector, the unit tangent vector t, is just the normalized version of this derivative. I will leave off the of t's here. We need the norm of the derivative of the parameterization, and so let me just put it in here. So the norm of this, well, hopefully you can see that you're going to have an r squared from these two terms and a k squared from that, and the whole thing square root. All right, so we just, to get the unit tangent vector, we simply divide this into that. I'm gonna pull an r outside and write it this way. And then the vector part is sine, minus sine t, cosine t, it will now be k over r. Almost made a mistake there. So that's our unit tangent vector. You see it, ha it has three components. It points, it points inwards towards the center, um, but also has a, a vertical component. I will uh, attempt to plot it here. This, this is my helix seen in 3D, a little small piece of it. So this is the same helix, or actually a little bit more of the curve, seen um, looking down the x-axis. So we don't see the x-axis here, we just see the y and the, and the z. And at, at this point here, it's not, the curve is not going through the origin. This, this, point, this point here corresponds to that point there. The, the, the curve is rising, and at, and at that point, we can plot the tangent vector, and it's a unit vector. I don't know if that's unit length or not, but it will be pointing roughly in that direction. So given the tangent vector, we're now going to compute the, the unit normal vector, and you do that by differentiating this tangent vector. So let's do that, t prime. But this will just be a constant, so it's unaffected by differentiation. And minus cosine t, minus sine t, and zero. Now again, to get the unit normal vector, n, we have to take our tangent vector, the derivative of our tangent vector, and divide it by its modulus to normalize it. I'll put it in here. We need the modulus of t prime. But actually, we could have just read this off here. In fact, the modulus is just r divided by square root of r squared plus k squared. I'll make a little bit more room here. Hopefully I can grab this. So we now have everything we need to compute the unit normal vector. I think you can even just eyeball it immediately. You'll see that you'll get minus cosine t minus sine t zero. So in this case, the what we see is the normal vector, the unit normal vector has no component in the z direction. So in this case, I will plot that vector at this point in the helix, and I'll plot it in orange, I guess. Again, I don't know exactly what unit length corresponds to here, but I'll say it's it's that. So the normal vector, again, it has no z component, not just at this z location, but at all z locations. So let me try and attempt to sketch. These are not; these are pointing towards, pointing inwards, radially, pointing radially inwards. They all have unit length, but because of the perspective, they're they're seen in shorter, and none of them have any z component. When I get back over here, I'm pointing this way. So that's kind of what they look like. Now, let's see, can I attempt to draw this one in? Again, they have no z component. They simply uh, are drawn in perspective here. Dare I draw one here? Let's draw one here. Let's attempt to draw both the normal vector, unit normal, and a unit tangent. The tangent is pointing upwards, has an upwards component, whereas the normal does not. So let's go do one more thing. Let's get to the curvature. Now the curvature is the modulus of t prime over the modulus of r prime. And if you just look back, you'll find the calculation goes easily. The result is, again, an easy calculation. It's r over r squared plus k squared. And the thing you'll note about this, really the most probably most important things are that it's a constant. It doesn't depend on where you are on the curve. And that curvature is less than or equal to 1 over r. And let me, let me do it this way. That is to say, the radius of curvature, which is, of course, 1 over kappa, is 
and you can see that that is bigger than or equal to r. And again, okay, and a constant, of course. So only when k is equal to 0 is the radius of curvature of the helix uh, equal to the radius of curvature of the circle with radius r. For any other, for any other k, it will be slightly larger. And I want to uh, emphasize that in this little sketch here. So this is the helix looking down from above, looking down from the z-axis, and it looks circular. That's not exactly centered, but that looks, uh, the, the helix looks circular. As you come up the helix, you wind around, but you're coming upwards. The, the thing is, uh, let me plot on here the normal vectors. The normal vectors plot point inwards, of course. And the thing is, our radius of curvature is larger than, than this radius. Let me, in fact, label it. This radius of this, I'm sorry, it's not exactly centered. The radius of this is r. The radius of this, actually, let me do it this way. The radius of this circle is r. That's what you see from above. However, the radius of the... Um, the radius of cur curvature is larger than, than this, so the osculating circle will have a larger radius. Its, its center will be, let's say, let's say here. And I, do, do I draw it? Okay, I will attempt one, one attempt. Oh, that's probably way overdone. Um, and it's not tangent at the right point. Let's just fix it real fast. It would be tangent at about here with center, say, about there. All right, I think I'll pause here before uh, continuing.